Hi, in this video, I will show you how to post data to Airtable using JavaScript and a webhook. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder of Axiom. Let's dive in. First up to do this, we're going to need to get our base ID. Now, I'm already logged into Airtable, so I'm just gonna click on the link from our guide and it's gonna open up the developer's web API introduction page. Now, what you'll find on there is a useful a list of all your bases where you can just go in and click and get the API documentation customized towards that base, which is really a good feature of, that they have in their documentation that Airtable do. And so on this page, we can now find the base ID. And here it is. If you look for the text, the ID of this base is, and you can see the ID is just there. And make a note of that ID. We're going to use it in a post request later on. You'll also see that you can find it in the string of the URL. Next up, you're going to need to get the table name where you want to post your data to. Now you can find that inside your base. I've already got mine open. And this is my base for the Axiom test post data air table. And you'll see the name of the table you want is the tab. Just I'm hovering around it with a pointer. And if you click into that, you can just cut and paste it. And so essentially the table name that you want is the name of the tab, just like in Google Sheets. Next, I need to make my personal access token. API is no longer, keys are no longer supported. But this is very easy to do. And of course, I'll do this on screen for you, then delete my token. Do not share your token with other people. Now I'm gonna click on the link we've got in the guide. It takes you when you're logged in straight to the tokens page we want to be at. I'm gonna click create token and walk you through the steps. It's a very simple axiom test. I'm gonna name my access token. Then I need to give it a scope. And the scope I want here is data.records and write, because I'm not looking to read. I don't want to get the comments, I just want to write a new record to the Airtable. I've added my scope. Finally, add my access. Choose the base that you want to write to. Your list will be dynamically loaded. There's mine, Axiom Test Post Data. And I just create, click, token, and the token's made. And I'm gonna cut and paste that to use for later. Right, we're now ready to set up our bot in Axiom AI. Let's talk you through it. You're gonna need the right JavaScript step, and that's where we're gonna put our post request. Obviously in this guide, we've got examples of post requests for you to use, where you can post a single record, up to 10 records. By the way, Airtable have a maximum amount of 10 records per request, limitation on their API, but we also show you a batching method that allows you to bypass that rule. Okay, so let's just quickly, for the purposes of this guide, show you how that we used a scraper step to send some data from Apollo to Airtable with this um, post request. So I'm just going to tab into the Apollo page that I've got open. I'm going to open up Axiom. I'm going to quickly get some data from the bots, um, get data from a URL step. It's added in the URL. I'm just going to select the data. I'm going to do name. Now, remember that Axiom is all its data is in a 2D array. And we've got columns in our, um, our Airtable, so we're going to try and match those columns up a little bit. We'll make sure the data synced. I think it was basically we've got the columns, name, email address, phone number, etc. So we can see what we can get from this page. Oops, I should have saved it. Never mind. So it's, first of all, it's name. Email, and I'll just add two more columns of data. Just for the demo, press complete. So that's the data that, that will fetch the data we want to scrape. Now, because we're only doing one record, we're gonna set the max results to one. You should see a preview of the data. Now, to show you how to set up the post request. So as mentioned, we're gonna use the write to JavaScript step. So I've extracted the example from the guide for sending a single record to Airtable and input it into my 
JavaScript step here on screen. Now all I need to do is make sure I add in my Airtable credentials and then make sure the fields match up and of course the right data tokens from Axiom are inserted. So let's take you through that step by step. It's pretty simple. First of all, Airtable base ID. I showed you how to find that earlier on. I can just cut and paste that straight into my Axiom. In fact, I'm just going to open up Axiom on this page. And so my base ID, click Save. Next, get the table name. I'm going to jump over to the next tab. And remembering what I showed you earlier, the tab names of the table names. Pretty much like Google Sheets, and I'm going to replace the stars in there, the asterisks. The customers, now I need my access token. I've just got that on the screen somewhere. Just take that and insert the access token. That's inserted. Now I need to make sure my fields are correct and insert the data from the step. That I want to, to pull past the data from to Airtable. Now you'll see the headers of the field names in your Airtable. You can see mine correspond, customer name, email address, phone number, etc. So mine is set up correctly for this. And then all I need to do is make sure my data is inserted. Now if you've got more than one get data step or you're using a, a, a different type of step, they'll have a different name. So you may want to use the insert data tool and select and insert your token. If you have all the columns selected, it will be passed in as a 2D array. And a single, if you select a single column, it will be an object. Now, if I just scroll back up there, you'll see actually it's inserted. But I don't want it down there. Sometimes you've got to make sure. The error I made there is I haven't got my token, or I'm sorry, I haven't got my cursor inserted in the right spot. So there, I just cut and pasted the token in. Right, we're ready to test out our post request. So what we should expect to see is Axiom in the, in the runner. It should open up the Apollo page, and then we won't see the JavaScript step do anything. It should just send the code to Airtable. But in the background here, we should see a new entry added. Tiago, and he, they should be added into our database. So like, without further ado, let's click Run. We're going to use the Desktop Runner. You should see it open up. It's going to highlight the areas scraping with orange. Now, let's just look on. Click back into Airtable. Once the run is complete, which should be shortly, you should see the entry added. Now, if something has gone wrong, of course, it's not going to add it. We'll need to debug, which, because we've got some console logs in there, isn't that tricky to do. But you can just see the entry has appeared. And that's how to post data to Airtable using JavaScript in Axiom AI. Now, quickly before I go, like I mentioned, you can debug using the console logs that we've added. And if, if you want, you can remove those console logs. I would recommend, however, if you do want to debug, add a wait step because you need to check the console in the browser that is running the automation. So add a lengthy wait. So it'll keep the window open so you can quickly check the console. Awesome. Thank you for watching. Actually, one final thing. The, there are some subtle variations in the examples that we've got. So we've got one to configure post requests for a single record, post request up to 10 records. You'll see the subtle change. Obviously, credentials are the same but we've got a different variable here where we use the whole of the 2D array. We then break that array down into rows. And that, that will basically iterate through up to 10 rows 
that come in through that variable. Now, if you want to post more than 10 records, you're going to have to use a batching technique here. You'll see we've got that new variable I just showed you in this example. Again, we break it down into rows and iterate through the data coming through that variable. But just at the bottom here, we've got a for loop that breaks it all up into batch sizes of 10 sending the request again. So essentially, we just keep repeating sending the request, breaking the data into batches. You'll find these examples on our website, along with other API examples. If you go to docs at the top, look for guides API. Thank you.